Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hi hey guys, welcome to week three of Beauty Bootcamp. Today we are talking all about flawless foundation. So a lot of times we see gurus, you know, makeup influencers, all that kind of stuff, and it looks like they have a beautiful, flawless complexion, right? Well, the truth is most of us don't have that complexion. Okay, one thing I'm gonna tell you is when you do go to follow somebody, an influencer, somebody you're just looking up to when it comes to makeup, there's a few things that I would definitely recommend you take into account. First thing is going to be, if do they have the same skin type as you? Okay, that's going to make a huge difference in the way that they apply their makeup versus how you're going to apply your makeup. Another thing is age. Okay, you kind of want to follow somebody who is roughly the same age as you because again, they are going to apply their makeup very differently because they don't have the same skin issues that you maybe do because of you know, your age, that kind of thing. So that is just something to keep in mind. So I, I am normal skin tone. I am in my early to mid thirties. So I'm kind of right there in the middle. I'm starting to get some wrinkles. Um, I have some sunspots from being bad in my younger days, laying out, not wearing sunscreen the way that I should. Um, I also have some breakouts because happens um so those are kind of that's kind of my skin so if you have the same kind of skin with me then these these tips that I'm going to teach you are going to be very similar for you now if you are a little bit older maybe a little bit younger we can always adjust first thing's going to be priming your skin priming is very important because it does give your makeup something to grip onto it fills in any of those little imperfections so i have two that i like and i use and i kind of use them back and forth the first one is the sunscreen that i talked to you guys about last week this sunscreen of as you guys know you should be wearing sunscreen every single day um this also because it is kind of tacky and feeling when it's first on it does double as a primer i really like this for a primer this is going to be good really if you're any skin type um, it does have, you know, things in there that's going to help with the, with the oil production. If you're oily, it also has a moisturizing if you are on the dry side. So this is going to work for any skin type. The same thing goes with our, um, first base makeup spray. This is actually a spray and it's just very light going on that this is going to be good for all skin types as well there is cooling technology in this as well as setting spray and we'll get to setting spray um what that's going to do especially if you do have oily skin what the setting spray is going to do or even this that cooling technology it is going to keep your makeup on longer because it's going to actually cool down your face so you don't sweat as much you also that oil production kind of is tamed down. So you're not gonna have that as bad and your skin, your makeup isn't gonna slip off. Okay, I'm gonna put on mine. I'm gonna be using the sunscreen today. Warm it up in your hands. Now with makeup and your primer, you do wanna go in the opposite direction. You wanna go down with your makeup where with skincare, you want it to go up, okay? So you wanna go down. Why? That's gonna help lay down any of those fine hairs on your face. Also, it's going to help fill in any of those pores. Now, one thing that I do, I do, and I didn't really mention it last week in our skincare, is I actually shave my face. I use something that's called a Tinkle Razor. It's like the worst name, but these things are amazing. Uh, there is also a company that just came out with a replacement head for these. It's called Jill, and those are also great as well. Um, but I use this once to twice a week to shave my face. Girls can shave their face. I promise you it's not going to grow back thicker, darker, any of those things. It's actually what it's going to do is it's going to take off a very thin layer of dead skin cells. So it's going to exfoliate your skin and it also is going to take away any of that, that very fine peach hair that's on your face. And it's going to allow your skincare to get deeper and closer contact with your skin as well as your makeup is going to lay smoother on your skin as well because it's not fighting with those hairs when I have found that it does make a huge difference on my skin but if you don't want to shave your face that's totally okay ha just have make sure your primer you're going down with it because it is going to help those little tiny hairs lay down smoother okay so let's go in to color correcting. Okay, color correcting is gonna be huge. And it's a thing that a lot of people aren't really familiar with. 
and all it's doing is it's using the color wheel and I have a color wheel right here that I'm going to show you guys and it is using complementary colors to cancel out any of those colors that we don't want on our face. So like I have some redness, I have a sunspot, um, you know, we have dark circles under our eyes. So what it's going to be doing is it's going to be using this color wheel to cancel out those areas. Because we want to cancel them out, it is actually going to give our foundation less work to do. So you're going to be using less foundation in general because you don't, you aren't packing it on trying to cover those imperfections when you can just do it very easily. Now, when I have breakouts like this, I am a picker. Do not pick your face. Um, when you have breakouts, just don't do it. It is easier to hide and conceal color than it is texture. You really just can't conceal texture. And when you pop something, there's automatically going to be texture. So that's why, you know, prom, your wedding, that kind of thing. Do not pick them. It's notorious because of stress. You're going to wake up with one. It's just what is going to happen. Um, don't pick it. Okay, so let's take this and let's go with this guy. I'm going to show you guys how to use it. So really what it is, is it's using complementary colors. So in terms of like red, a lot of breakouts, rosacea, all that kind of stuff has some red in it, right? So you're going to look on here and you're going to go opposite. Opposite is going to be green. So you're going to use something that is green toned to cancel out those reds. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a bit. This outer ring right here, this is for your medium skin tones. Okay. So I am kind of, I would classify me as a medium skin tone. Okay. So that's what this outer ring is going to be and what you're going to be looking for. The second ring right here, this is for our fair skin ladies. Okay. This is what you're going to look at to see what hues, that kind of thing. Now, this is going to be for my dark skin ladies. This is going to be the ring that you look at. And then this most inner one, this is going to be the natural hues in their pure form. It actually help you when it comes to eyeshadows and using color theory in that sense. This is from Terry Tomlinson Makeup Academy. Um, you can definitely find them on her website, which is just Terry Tomlinson, I think, makeupacademy.com. Um, and I think they're like... 15 bucks, 16, 17, 20 bucks max. But it's really good to have, especially if you're a makeup artist or you're doing makeup on other people. It's a great tool to have in your makeup kit. Or if you're crazy like me and just want to have it in your everyday life, just so you can get the colors right, you can grab one of those too. So I am looking and I can already tell you it's a cooler tone. Okay. So cooler tones means that I'm going to keep in this section right here kind of the greens, blues, and purples, okay? So I'm gonna start here with the purple. It might, I mean, it's close to that, but I feel like it's a little bit more on the blue side. So we're gonna keep going. And actually that one right there, that blue, looks like it is very close. So I'm gonna go with this blue. I think this is going a little bit too yellow. So I'm gonna stick with this blue right here. So if we go across from that, we are looking at oranges, okay? So that's the color that I'm gonna to use to cover this up. And you can use all kinds of things. So you can use concealers, um, you can use, I'm gonna show you how to also use eyeshadow because you can use eyeshadow, but if you're gonna use eyeshadow, you need a concealer that's gonna lock it in, okay? so. I'm going to use actual eyeshadow for this, but then for some of these, I'm going to show you how to do that with concealer that has some co like color correcting in there. I am going to be taking this eyeshadow color. It's called Centerfold. It's from Lime Life by Alcone, and it is very much in orange. So I'm going to take a makeup brush, and I am just going to, and it can just be any makeup brush, and I'm going to tap, you can see it on there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap it directly on that spot. Okay, I want to blend it out, but I don't want it to be like taking over my face. I really just want to keep it concentrated right on this spot. And as you're noticing, I am doing this right on my bare skin. I the, You're going to color correct before you do your foundation. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to take a concealer. This is concealer one. It has a little bit of green in it because orange is definitely has some red in it because you do mix red and yellow together to make orange, then you are going to take this. This has a little bit of green in it. It's concealer one, again, but Lime Life by Alcone. 
And I'm gonna take the same brush, I am gonna dip in here, and I am just gonna pat right over that spot. And look, it is immediately, just like magic, disappearing. While this is still in my hand, I'm gonna go over some of these. I do like using a brush for color correcting versus like going in with my finger because you are gonna get less product and it's very important to really blending out before you putting on your foundation just because you don't want it to get too cakey. So I'm just gonna go back in there with this green and just start tapping. All right, there are other colors that we can use for different parts. So we've already gone over what orange covers. So again, if it does have some of that blueness to it, that's gonna be age spots, that's gonna be hyperpigmentation. It's gonna even be melasma. A lot of people suffer with melasma. Green, again, is gonna cover up any redness. And then, so if you have blues, and I'm gonna show you kind of, again, blues. I have some underneath my eyes. What's gonna be great for those blue tones are, again, gonna be something orange, something kind of in the peachy family. So this is a concealer by Lime Life by Elko, and this is number three, and it does have some of that peachiness in there. So I'm just taking a concealer brush. Again, I like to do this with a brush versus my finger because it does give you light application, and I am going right over that circle. Now, you notice I'm not doing a triangle. I'm not just like covering up. If I go like this, you can see on this eye, a lot of times if you're looking forward, you can't see those dark circles, but if you tilt your head down, oh yeah, it's right there. So right here, I've already covered it up and you can see what a difference that makes. It just brightens it up. Right here in your inner eye, that a lot of times is really dark. So you just kind of want to put it over just the area that you're wanting to brighten up. Already, it's making a huge difference, and I'm gonna do this other side in real time so you guys can see exactly what it's doing. Again, makeup, it really is like magic when you use it in areas that you need. It can just cover up those imperfections so easily. Another place that I'm gonna add a little bit of that green, a little bit of that, that one concealer that does have that green in it, is gonna be on my eyelids. If you notice, they are a little bit, they're orangey, but they're kind of more on the red side. So I am gonna put a little bit of that green, maybe mix a little bit of this number three, just to kind of cover that up, just to kind of, neutralize my eye. Okay, that's going to help our eyeshadows stick better because I'm going to use it also as a concealer as a primer for my eyeshadows, but also it's just going to cancel out any of that redness that I have on, naturally on my eyelids because if I leave it then my eye color is not going to shine through. It's actually going to be hindered and it's going to be fighting with that darkness that I have on my on my eye. So by adding this, it is going to help those colors once we start doing eyeshadows really just shine through and be true to the colors that I'm wanting. Right, so now that we have our color correcting done, we need to add a little bit of something, right? We need to add a layer of foundation on just to really bring everything together. I would definitely let all of this set so you're not wiping it away. There's a less chance of you wiping it away when you do put on your foundation. Now, the foundation that I use is a cream. I really love it, okay? It's gonna be great for all kinds of skin tones. A lot of people, they do really like powders and that's absolutely okay. Just know that if you do have more areas to conceal, that the powder isn't gonna give you that much coverage. It's just gonna be very light and soft, which is absolutely okay. Just kind of know what kind of coverage that you are looking for. For me, I do like a buildable high coverage, meaning that if I want it to be thinner, I can make it thinner. If I want it to be that, that high coverage, I can still have that as well. Now, the, the one that I am using, it is 50% pigment. If anybody is familiar with RCMA foundation, RCMA 
actually makes Lime Life's foundation, except they make ours paraben free, which is pretty awesome. So you're going to get that same great professional grade makeup that everybody loves um, that has that 50% pigment, but you're not going to get any of that yuckiness that maybe you don't want. And it's 50% pigment where most foundations are anywhere from 20 to 30% pigment. As you can see I have, I have four different, <laughs> I have four different foundation shades and that's actually because I range from actually three. This one's a little light for me. Sometimes I will actually use it as a highlighter. Um, but I range all three of these depending on the time of year. So right now I am this shade right here. This is my one, but I'm going to show you guys how to actually color match yourself. If this wasn't the day of COVID, you could go and you could color match and you could actually swatch. Um, I just don't see that world coming back. Um, so knowing how to color match you and where to color match you is a huge thing. For me, I like to color match my neck. I like to match my face to my neck. Some people are vice versa and they want to match their neck to their face, which I feel like it just takes more work because you're having to put it all over. It's just easier to go for your neck to your face. So when you are actually color matching, and I'm going to go in with my darkest shade here and I'm going to show you. So when you are color matching, what you're going to do is you're going to take your jaw and you're going to draw all the way down. Okay. And you can already see that's way too dark, which believe it or not, I'm this dark in like July. Um, so that's way too dark. So let's go with, I'm going to actually go in with my lightest shade. Okay, and I'm going to take this and again, we are going to, again, you can automatically tell that's way too light, but it's not far off. Okay, we're not looking at my face. My face can be red. My face can be, you know, who knows because I could have just washed my face and, you know, my exfoliated my face. My face is a little red. I don't really want to go with that. I want to go with my neck. So it's not far off. It's really not. It's blending in pretty well, but it is still a little bit light. So I'm going to go in with that shade that I currently am. And again, I'm just putting it and look, it virtually disappears. That's exactly what you want is you just want it to just disappear. Now, obviously, like I said, we're in the days where it's hard to just test it out. I do have a color match quiz that is in the descriptions. So if you are wanting to get color matched on, especially with this foundation, definitely click on that. It's going to really help. But I want you guys, when you're taking it, to take it in natural light. So that is not in your bathroom with the light on, looking in the mirror, that's not natural light, okay? It is standing in front of a window that doesn't have direct sunlight coming in, okay? So it's gonna be obviously during the day, okay? And I want you to look into the, the window, not the window behind your back, actually looking into the window, natural lighting and doing this quiz. I also want you to click a picture for me so I can help you color match as well. But natural lighting really is key for doing this. Your 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 skin is so different. Okay, I especially if you have darker skin, a lot of times the middle of your face is a lot lighter than the outer portion. So you might need two foundations to kind of mix or to strategically place to get you the best match. And that's absolutely okay. It is okay to use more than one shade of foundation for your face. There is no rule that says that you have to use only one shade because it's just not realistic. Okay, our skins have different different parts to it. You know, even right here, if you see my skin right here is a, a little bit darker because that's where sun hits. A lot of times that's why I do have multiple shades is because I like to kind of get more of that natural look. So I will do a lighter bit in my in my face here and then go to the darker on the outer corners. That's absolutely okay. Okay, so having that option and not and knowing that you're not locked into just one color is absolutely huge. So again, 
it really depends on your preference on which kind of foundation that you have, whether it be powder, whether it be cream, liquid, that kind of thing. And it also depends on what kind of brush or tool that you're gonna use. So if you are going with a cream, a liquid, then you can absolutely do a sponge like this. You do want it damp. If you are gonna do more of a powder or even if it is a cream, um, liquid this guy right here can really do it all because it is a brush it is those synthetic fibers so you are able to kind of do everything with this this is also going to help stipple in on your face a little bit more um than what this is so if you do have a lot of spots on your face that you kind of do have some color correcting you might want to go in with this because it is going to give a little bit lighter pressure um a brush like this is also going to give you a heavier foundation coverage because it is going to pick it up a little bit more where this is going to shear it out because it is a little bit damper all right so i am going to use the sponge today okay so when you're working with this foundation in particular it is like i said it is a wax base so you do need to warm it up for your skin so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take it and i'm actually going to rub it what as you can see it's starting to get shiny that is that wax warming up and people get scared when they hear the word term wax because you think it's going to you know clog your pores and like that it's actually going to sit on top of your pores versus inside of them so you actually are going to get less breakouts than something that is going to seep into your pores and clog them so i just put the excess on my nose on my face kind of blend it out then what you're going to do is you're just going to take a sponge do a turn and then just start patting. Okay, this is the easy part now. Okay, the hardest part was actually the color correcting and being able to hide those imperfections. From here, it's actually pretty easy. You do want to just kind of bounce it versus wiping it. Wiping it, again, is going to wipe things away, but you're also just not going to get the coverage that you want. So bouncing it is going to place it. It's going to press it into your skin. And this foundation, even though it is so full coverage, and you can see that, like, look at look at that color match for one. But also because it is such high pigment, you are using less. So even though it is high coverage, it is very, very light because you aren't caking it on. A great thing that I also like about this is it doesn't have any oxidation. Okay, have you ever had a foundation that you put it on and then a couple hours later, it's like two shades darker than it when it started? That's actually called oxidation. And a lot of times foundations, especially if they have water as the main ingredient, and look at your foundation, does it have water as its main ingredient? Okay, then if it does, there's a good chance that it's going to oxidize on you. Another thing that a foundation that has water in it is there's a good chance, especially if they put moisturizers in it and emollients, it's going to separate on you. Okay, by separating, it's going to look cakey. It's just not going to look right. Now you can see because I did cover up some of that darkness up here it just doesn't look as natural right like here it still looks natural but because I did cover up some there it doesn't just look as natural as it did so what I'm going to do to kind of add a little bit of that back in I'm going to go in with darker not that super dark I wasn't that dark but this is kind of my middle of the two and it's just going to add in some of that okay absolutely you could do this with a with a bronzer, you can do this with, you know, once you actually go in and conceal. But if you have the foundation to do it, absolutely go in there and start adding those parts back that are going to just bring your face back. So from here, now that we have all of our foundation on setting, a lot of people, some people like to set their face, some people don't. Okay, if you are dry skin, for one, I definitely don't recommend using powders. Even when it comes to a powder foundation, it's going to stick to every single dry spot on your face and it's going to look worse. It's going to pull 
any of that moisture that you maybe do have on your skin, it's gonna pull that and it's actually gonna make it drier. So definitely stick with something that is a cream, a liquid, if you have dry skin, because it's gonna help that. When it comes to, if you have oily skin, a powder is okay for that because it is gonna kind of soak up those excess, those excess oils. So I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush. Like I said, I have normal skin. I can get away with with setting my face with powder. Um, if you have combination skin, I would definitely only use it in your T-zone where you do have that, that oiliness. So I'm gonna dip into, this is actually a very pressed, finely pressed powder. Okay, this is a Dior formula and this is actually the tester palette. So they, you can actually get the big ones that are like this size. Um, but I like this one because it does have every single color. So I'm going in with the one that kind of corresponds to my skin and just putting them in those areas. Okay, I definitely make sure to do my nose and right where my sunglasses hit, I make sure to do those because those need just a little bit more grip. Okay, if you do have more mature skin, then you definitely need to watch out for around your eyes. Okay, you can see, if I get nice up and close here, that it's starting to settle into my wrinkles, okay? If you don't have wrinkles underneath your eyes, you are not human, <laughs> okay? Our, uh, our eyes need those wrinkles to be able to blink, okay? So anytime you see those girls and it looks like they have no wrinkles, it's just not, it's not realistic because we all have wrinkles on our eyes. And use a brush, okay? But just have it prepared. Okay, have that brush ready, press that area, go right in without moving and set that area. Because these are finely milled, they are gonna act as a, kind of like a filter that you're putting on your face. Like even look here, this, you can see the circle, you can see it less there. But by pressing out that concealer, or whatever that even that foundation that we have underneath that eye that eye by pressing it out like this and then without moving going in and setting it it is going to keep it from is going to keep it from going back and caking in there again okay you just have to press it out and don't move have it ready okay but you can see it's definitely helped cover that up and I don't have to worry about that from here, I am going to set my face. Again, we are going to talk all about the highlighting, the contouring, and the blush um, next week in our video, but I just wanted to really get this. But I always spray my face in different terms. So you're going to see me spray my face with setting spray in different sections because I really want to lock in that section. So I'm going to spray it. This is my time setter. This is great if you have normal to dry skin. If you are normal to oily, then you're going to want the oil strike because it does have more advanced um, cooling technology. It's going to keep the oil production at bay, but it's also mattifying. So I'm just going to spray this. And again, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to look up and kind of pat right in that area just to make sure I really get that setting spray in there. It's going to, again, help everything not go into any fine lines. This homework. This week's homework is all about color correcting. Okay, I find color correcting is probably one of the hardest things people have is learning how to cover up those imperfections on their skin to so they're not using so much foundation. So what I want you to do is look for a flaw in your face. I don't want you to overanalyze. Just something that's kind of bothering you, whether it being a sunspot, if you have a breakout, that kind of thing. I want you to play with the color wheel. You can easily look it up online. Um, if you are in the beauty boot camp that does have the email, then I, I included one for you, but I want you to look and I want you to find your color tone and then find a complimentary for that to figure out what color you need that is going to cover that. Then I want you to actually cover it. Okay. So whether that being you do have one of those fancy color correcting palettes, 
If you do just have eyeshadow and maybe a concealer, I want you to kind of play and find what works for you. Remember, blend it out, let it set and dry before you add on foundation, okay? And the second part of this is I want you to find a foundation and make sure your, your foundation shade actually matches you, okay? Like I said, it should match your neck, not your your back of your hand. A lot of times people are trying to match their color and they're looking on the back of your hand. It's just not realistic. Always do to your neck. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always just an email away and I can absolutely help you. So I will see you guys all next week. Have a beautiful day.